The biggest, worst hacks of 2018, coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris and this is ThreatWire for January 1st, 2019. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. This week we are taking a look at all of the biggest and worst hacks of 2018 in a countdown, so let's go ahead and start with number five. Number five focuses on DNA testing websites. Way back in June, the genealogy and DNA testing website called MyHeritage came under fire for exposing email addresses and encrypted passwords for about 92 million users of the site. Those affected had signed up for the site before October 26, 2017. Now, while MyHeritage did not believe any of the information was used, they still opened an investigation into the breach and rolled out two-factor authentication for users. Credit card information, DNA data, family trees, and other user information was not included in this breach. But over the summer, 23andMe, which is another genealogy website, also announced on their blog that they were entering a partnership with GSK, which is the world's ninth largest pharmaceutical company, and that they would include sharing over 5 million users' data with GSK. Now, while they took the approach of saying that this partnership will help with finding new medicines and cures, it is also a gold mine of free information for Big Pharma without paying the actual users for the research. Their DNA will be used free of charge. 23andMe did clarify that users will have the option to opt out of the program. Number four is Exactus. Also during the summertime, marketing and data aggregation firm Exactus disclosed a security breach. A database containing 340 million individual records was sitting on a publicly accessible server that a security researcher found. This totaled two terabytes of data on hundreds of millions of Americans as well as businesses. The data included names, phone numbers, home addresses, email addresses, age, gender, and even children's information. Now, while it is unclear if this data was ever scraped by anyone else, the fact that it was publicly accessible is unnerving. The data points on each person listed included over 400 variables about them, if they smoked, what their religion is, do they own pets, what's their sexual orientation. With this kind of data, it would be pretty easy for an attacker to impersonate or profile anyone. Earlier this year, Facebook came under scrutiny for the Cambridge Analytica scandal, in which a data analytics company used the private data of over 50 million users to help political figures. Facebook announced this on March 16th and stated that the Cambridge Analytica company received the data on users via an application available through Facebook's marketplace, which violated the Facebook Terms of Service. Now, while the application was originally removed for violating the service back in 2015, the data was not deleted. Cambridge Analytica later was raided by law enforcement and the CEO was suspended. Facebook came under fire by attorney generals in multiple different states and the data leak began a series of investigations and hearings. Now, just a month after this was made public, Facebook was also found to be sharing data with device makers, such as messaging information, likes, and address books. Due to Facebook being in the spotlight for privacy concerns, starting in April, the company chose to start winding down the partnerships with hardware makers. And later in September, Facebook detailed a breach that affected 50 million accounts, which allowed attackers to use the View As feature on the website to access private information in accounts and steal Facebook access tokens. The issue was fixed and access tokens for known affected users were reset. And lastly, in December, I know we're not done with Facebook yet, Facebook announced a bug that exposed private and even unposted photos for 6.8 million users to third-party application developers. And this was an API bug that was fixed soon after and affected users were notified. Number two on my countdown is Marriott's Starwood brand. Announced in November but discovered in September, Marriott received a security alert about a breach to their Starwood guest reservation database, which affected Starwood properties owned by Marriott International such as the W, Sheraton, and Westin. Marriott disclosed that 500 million people had data hacked in this breach, including but not limited to information such as names, addresses, date of birth, SPG membership information, email addresses, and even passport numbers. 
giving attackers a trove of information for identity theft. This data and the amount of affected users puts Marriott at number two on my list. It even included encrypted credit card information that was encrypted, but the encryption keys were also stolen. Marriott offered affected users a free web watcher monitoring account, and they sent out notifications soon after. And at the top of our list of security breaches this year is Adhar at number one. Back in March, India's national ID database called Adhar was hit with a data breach that affected everyone who was a part of the database. So, 11 billion people. This national ID database keeps a list of all citizens with their fingerprints and iris scans alongside full names, unique 12 digit identity numbers, bank details, and a lot more. Indian authorities denied and refuted the claims about the data being breached, but parts of the database started leaking out publicly. It took weeks before anything was done, but eventually, after ZDNet posted a news article about it, the database was finally officially taken offline. Thank you so, so, so much to everyone, especially patrons, for helping make 2018 a huge year for ThreatWire. Because of you, we now have a Discord channel, we have an audio feed, as well as the video RSS feed, we have an editor, that's awesome, security headlines from Daily Tech News Show, even an annual physical reward, which I'm releasing next year. So if you are interested in getting access to all of that, plus a bunch of extra stuff, hit the button to become a Patreon supporter because it all helps and it shows me that you appreciate the work that I'm putting in for this show. Even on January 1st, I am here every single week. Also a big thanks to our Hush Puppy Perk level patrons for sending in fur baby photos. I love them, keep them coming. Hit that subscribe button or share this episode on your favorite social media page as well. And with that, I am Shannon Morris and I will see you on the internet. Happy New Year.